Well, hello and welcome to the Bowtie Gardens for the January 2023 garden tour. Uh, can't believe it's coming down to the end of January already. And also can't believe all the stuff that's happening in the garden because things are happening. Um, we do live in the panhandle of Florida and so um, it's not like we're gonna get snow. Uh, we seldom get a frost. Um, we, uh, we've we been having some strange weather. So we're, we're a month ago on Christmas, we had some 18 degree weather, which is the coldest weather recorded here since 14 years ago, I think it was. It's been a long time, but uh, it was very cold. We lost the tops of a bunch of peppers and um, I brought in a lot of plants for that. And then it got hot, well not hot, it got up to 70s. And it was very nice some days. It was cool and then nice and then cool. Uh, we just got over a few days of, uh, how, what, what uh, was 70s last week. Then we got down to upper 30s for a few nights. Actually, we're still in the upper 30s. Tonight it's supposed to be mid 30s for a couple more days and then it's supposed to be get back to warm. So these plants are confused to say the least. In fact, once we get over here to this uh, fig tree right here, <laughs> talk about confusion. That thing's confused. It doesn't know what season it's talking talking about. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go do our regular routine for the front and side gardens. If uh, you're just stumbling along here, we do these uh, garden tours every month. Uh, this is really my own journal of what's happening in the garden. Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of good indexing down in the description which makes the chapters in the video. And so if you wanna to go to certain parts, you can skip around to certain parts and I don't mind. Uh, I do refer back to my videos a lot. I am ADD, my brain doesn't work quite right and I need a lot of reminding. And so these videos do me a lot of good. Uh, so if you're stumbling along uh, and you find this interesting, please be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel, not to miss anything. We've been doing this for almost a year now and I can't wait till we're over a year uh, of uh, video tours to see what's been going on. We did just move into this property uh, about a year and a half ago, not, qu not quite a year and a half ago. And uh, so we're still learning. We uh, did some big stuff. Some of y'all might know we did some big stuff in the past uh, few weeks and uh, big changes in the back. And we're very excited about that. So anyway, um, this is going to be the same pattern as always for the front and side gardens. And we're gonna start, of course, over with the strawberry patch. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. the chip pile is still there no surprise there it's about par for the course here but the strawberries are doing their thing I have now remember these strawberries came from seeds I picked off of an organic Walmart strawberry about three years ago two years ago three years ago uh, I got four of them and they were all planted in the area I think we lost one of them but um, these seed these plants are about to start planting our growing berries and if I dig around in here you see there's a lot of mulch I put a lot of extra mulch in here for the cold and it's done very good for them but you can see there's flowers everywhere and we've had temperatures down in the 30s uh, it doesn't in fact the 18 degree temperatures didn't even phase these things they were they were sticking up proud and strong the whole time the really cool thing was the dollar weed, which is this thing right here, and you can see it looks rather similar, but it's not. But the dollar weed on the cold all turned brown and died. Now we have new crop of dollar weed popping up everywhere. But we got strong half of our, our strawberries here, that corner. Uh, I'm gonna be focusing on propagating out strawberry plants over there. And we do have strong 
growth back in this area. From about here forward is the Walmart. There is a, sing a couple of sweet berries. I think that one there and this one here are sweet berries. And these are Ozark Beauties along with a few in this mess here. So they are looking strong and getting ready for a new year. One thing I'm going to be doing different this year Last year, I did not cut back any runners. I let all the runners go because I wanted this thing to grow as thick as I could get it, which is what we've got now. And so um, this year, I'm ready for it to start producing strawberries. So when it starts doing runners, especially in this thickest part here, I'm gonna be cutting off runners. Now I might start planting some seeds to take care of that brown spot over yonder try to get uh, some things growing in that direction but that's not very hard to do so I'm not too concerned about it we do have next to mr. turtle down here we have our mint and if you'll notice I got to show you the mint is starting to grow and it's growing thick this is chocolate mint and all this down here this it is a thick carpet oh it smells so good and this thing is gonna be full this year. Uh, what I will be doing here in a couple months when it really starts getting warm, we will cut it back and then break this up into several other pots so that I can have a few more of these around the property. So the pomegranates on the front are very excited to be just sprouting not not all of them i should say but let me work my way around here to this front one it gets the most sun and you can see look at the growth it is starting to grow here it is january 25th and these things are just getting started that one is obviously alive now remember we uh, trimmed a bunch of these down to one and two stems and this year we're probably going to be doing some more of that. This one here, the second one, I'm a little concerned about because I don't see anything and neither do I see anything on the third one. But I'm not very concerned because um, we are still in the cold. So it's not something that I'm going to worry about. The uh, These fig trees, now this is a brown turkey fig and so is this. These two are fully dormant and not doing anything. So, and that's where they're supposed to be. This one is actually gonna get planted right here. I'm still unsure about this one, but fig trees, they can go dormant, they can look dead, and they can come back. They will grow like crazy. So over here past the gate, we have the plumeria and it's still hanging on to those last two leaves which is kind of sad i don't know what this is going to do i did bring this in for the freeze uh, i don't know what this is going to do or if it's going to make it i've got it here next to the house to be a little bit protected it gets good morning sun and it does not get watered very well right now i still have not this irrigation head right here i'm going to be taking it out because we're going to be parking our trailer here eventually and i'm going to be splitting that between a small emitter over here and another sprinkler head over here that will actually take care of the top of this bed so it still does not have good water however we got about two two and a half inches of rain this morning this morning so it is very well watered so the elephant in the room here is the garlic and I've got to say, like this one right here, you see how it's kind of twisted up down here? This one got all tangled up in the very thick mulch. And next year, I'm going to have to remember not to put four inches of mulch on these. Um, well, it's actually settled down to about two and a half, three inches. But the this got tangled up in it and, and was having a hard time finding its way to growth. And when I pulled it out, it was almost white. In fact, you can still see there's still some white there. Uh, this leaf is probably gonna probably need to just trim that. But look at it now, it's starting to green out. And I went around and counted. I think we've got over 150 of the 155 cloves of garlic that we planted out that are growing. 
This one here is another one of those that got tangled up. You can tell by the top of this, but the thing is, look inside here, there is a brand new leaf growing. Brand new leaf, and it's gonna be okay. Garlic will grow. Same thing with these five bags of garlic. All of them are growing strong. You can tell that one in the middle had a little bit of trouble. I had to dig that one out, and I think I had to dig this one out. All of these came out strong, though. I mean, you can tell. Look at the green. They're green. They're stiff. They're feeling good. Oh, my goodness. They're loving life. So, of course, it's Florida. It's not going to snow, but this is about as close as we get. A nice blue let it snow. In fact, we have blue lights that shine on the house right now at night. But these pots at the front, now this is a Croton, C-R-O-T-O-N, and I am anxious to see what they do. I don't know if they're dead or not. I did trim back the dead leaves and let them be after the a lot of cold was done with, and just kind of see if they grow back. They're, they're a pretty Croton. They're those uh, yellow and maroon Crotons that we had in these pots, but this here, look at this, this is mums. And they are growing like a thick blanket all over here. So I'm kind of curious, are we going to get our mums back for next year? That would be fun. Our My gardener friend, Richard, did this over at the apartment building that we used to live at, and he brought all the mums back. And the interesting thing is I think there are actually some new mums. I think this is a brand new plant. Uh, well, see, now that's growing up from this core here. This is all the original plant that was here. Um, well, maybe they are not. Well, and see, that's, I think that's, a, oh, no, see, it's growing underneath here, but I think that it's going to um, grow into a new plant. I don't know how mums do, so this is the first time I've ever done them. It's brand new to me. This little pot has a, a dead poinsettia in it that we'll be taking out, but down here we have turmeric. That's what this is right here. And it died back on top, and I'm curious to see if it will come back. This was turmeric over here that never got harvested. You can see the leaves there. We'll have to see if uh, they come back. I cut this one off. I didn't cut that one off. I think they're gonna grow back. I never did harvest these, and I probably should. I may yet, I don't know. I'm not gonna touch them right now though. The hedges. Next is the hedges and these hedges, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of hedges. I'm certainly not a fan of taking care of them. And uh, so, you know, the, the regular maintenance that has to be done on them, I'm not great at it, I'll admit, but I thought after this last time trimming them, you know, I thought they were going to be dead, and back in this corner especially, but there is just new growth everywhere. And someone told me, oh, you can't kill those things, and I believe it. This thing has growth everywhere. Look at just tons and tons and tons of growth, and it's just tiny, tiny growth. And we've just had a little bit of decent weather. So, um, yeah. I've, I wasn't sure how hard I could cut these back, but after seeing this, I'm believing that I could probably cut it back pretty hard and not have to worry. I have been trying very hard to keep all the vines out of here so that they won't get choked out. And I've done pretty good, I've done pretty good. So we've got several different kinds, and this is kind of the fun thing to watch as we go. I'm hoping to do a video with the different flowers because one bush flowers one time, another bush flowers another time, another, another time. Every one of them is different. It's real interesting. And so we'll see what happens with those shrubs. Okay, I gotta show you the fig tree. Look at this. And this of course is our big fig tree. This is the first one we planted out front and it's right here behind the artichoke bed. And again, we're gonna be expanding this bed just a little bit to match this edge here. 
and we're going to be putting the sunchokes back in here. I would like to do just the tall ones, but these figs are just taking off. And I did not trim, I was going to trim that one branch off right there. And I was going to trim that one branch there, but I decided not to because both of these two branches are kind of going parallel to each other. But this one's kind of getting away. That's really the only one at the bottom. And then this one right here, because it's kind of getting out. I want to keep this thing as a big goblet shape. And uh, this one here, I don't know. I've been debating. We'll have to see if we cut that or not. This one, though, is just getting out of control. We didn't talk about the jalapenos over in the strawberry patch, but let me go over there real quick. Mrs. Bowtie will enjoy seeing this. We got jalapenos everywhere. This, these are a little smaller some of them and then there are a few bigger ones but because we actually harvested real heavily from this one but these are the two jalapenos that are behind the chocolate mint in the strawberry patch and this is the jalapeno that's over in the artichoke patch now I don't believe there are any jalapenos on here it's had a little bit of a rough life and you can see the, the leaves have been beaten up have been hurt and they're looking quite miserable but the thing is if you look down here at the bottom you see all that new growth right here that's strong follow this stem up and look out at the end here this is all new growth right here and it is looking strong so this will start producing again it's going to have to do all this new growth and get new strength back there's even new growth there and a lot of it oh 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 see now I was looking for buds, and there they are. Brand new buds. So this will start producing jalapenos. Very excited about that. Mrs. Bowtie will be too. So we planted out green globe artichokes, and those are gonna be going right in here. I'd like to put three here and then two over there and let them grow in this whole space. That's what this space is for. We did the sun chokes, which are called Jerusalem artichokes, before I understand understood what they were exactly. And so now we've got, a, I've harvested a whole bunch of them. I do, uh, there's one more plant right here. But, and if you wanna see how this is harvested, just go back and look at the harvest video that we did with Cousin Bowtie Mark. But, I mean, look, they're just everywhere. They're just, everywhere i don't have to go very far to find a good sunchoke root there's one right there that one's getting a little little uh burned on the surface there's a whole bunch of them under here Let's see there's one there's a big one right there i don't want to dig them out because in the ground they're safe for storage one of the best places for them, so we leave them here. We did fully harvest this one in the video, so that one is pretty well cleared out. We're gonna have to find out. I would like to keep them confined one, two, three over here, maybe four, I'm not sure, but I do want to keep them confined over to this new section of the bed that's going to, and, and again, I want this grass thing to the curve here to match the curve here. So we'll just be widening this bed out just a little bit. You'll have to excuse me, I'm getting over a bit of a seasonal problem. Some, con con some uh, congestion. Some more garlic is growing, all growing very strong. Several bags going all along there. Bag of peppermint. And this peppermint, I don't know, is it starting yet? This peppermint will come back. I'm hoping. Not peppermint. Yes, peppermint, thank you. That's not it. Um, well, I hope it comes back. This does not look very good. But take note of that. Looks like a dead peppermint plant. Next month, 
No guarantees, but I'm hoping it looks like a thriving peppermint plant. So the front pollinator garden here, there's a lot of weeds going on here. There's also other things growing in here that I'm not sure what to do with yet. These things that look like grass, these are the rain lilies. And there, this was one bulb, and look, there's two new bulbs there. They're starting to multiply. This was one bulb. Every one of these was one bulb. That was one bulb. There's one, two more bulbs. Uh, th I'm sorry, three more bulbs here. And I'm not going to break these up at all. I am going to show you here in a little bit at the end of the tour the grow bag with these in it that started out with one bulb, and you will not believe how many bulbs are in it now. We'll be cleaning that up on a video. But there are, now there's a lot of dollar weed in here. There's dollar weed there, that's, that's dollar weed. Uh, there's more dollar weed over there. But uh, I'll have to do a lot of cleaning out, but I'm being hesitant because, um, see, I think this might be zinnias popping up right here. I don't know. It looks like it could be zinnias. Even some more, something else growing up here. So remember, I, threw a lot of seeds into this bed over the past, over the last few months of the last growing season. So we'll have to see what grows. These are the Egyptian walking onions, which are thriving. Uh, this used to be a single, uh, maybe not a single, but it was a couple of, uh, maybe a couple of sprouts and now it's turning into more. Most of these were one or two. And look at this one here. This one was probably at least two when I put it in here, but it's got five, six stems there now. This one's up just a monster right here. So we got some good onions going in here. The Egyptian walking onions are eating more like green onions. So this over here is the angel trumpet, and you can see the branches have completely lost their leaves, but look down there at the bottom. It is starting to grow new. That is new angel trumpet plant. It has a lot of clover in here. I can see all kinds of other stuff. There's a dandelion, which I'm not sure I want to kill yet. There's an old uh, bell pepper plant that got left out in the cold and it will likely have to go. Probably nothing left of it. There are bunch of zinnia seeds and what else nasturtium in this bed all over the place so I'm gonna have to figure out what zinnia and nasturtium leaves look like before I do a lot of pulling out here this is the Thai plant it's that purple big leaf purple plant there's four of them in here one two three four I am actually planning to move a couple of these down and put in the fifth one over here that's in the back bed. There's a grow bag with one, with a surprise one in it. Oh, so the amaryllis is over here. And there are actually a couple of amaryllis and they are starting to come up. Now this started as one bulb and you can see there's a bulb of, well, here's the main bulb right here. That's gonna be the main one. And there's another bulb over here. There's another bulb over here. There's another bulb here and another bulb here. So this one bulb has turned into at least five bulbs. I'm not gonna touch this. Again, I'm, I, this is gonna be one of the plants that I leave untouched. Oh, there's zinnias. Those light green things over there, those are zinnias right there and there. But I wanna leave these things one more year, let them really establish, and then next year we'll look into possibly um, pulling, digging them up, breaking them out, and just spreading them out a little bit more. I really think we have a ton of zinnias growing all through here. A ton of them. Oh, that's exciting. That's what I was hoping for right there. That is what I was hoping for right here. I don't know, but I think that's zinnia. There's supposed to be nasturtium along here and I don't see any nasturtium leaves yet. It may be just too early. But look at all these. These are all zinnias. This is all zinnia. Ooh, this bed's gonna be beautiful this year. It was kind of sparse last year. Go back and look at uh, 
middle of the summer in this bed. Okay, so that's the other amaryllis right there. And it's actually looking real promising too because here's the original bulb right there and there's a second bulb. And I thought I had seen a third bulb, but no, I don't think so. Ooh, excuse me. So we got two bulbs going in here right now. So that's kind of cool. More zinnia. This thing's going to be full of zinnias. Oh, I'm so excited. I am so excited. These Thai plants, pretty sure these things will come back. This is what they do. They did for me last year. They got all withered and, and brown. And then they just started shooting up from the bottom again. So we'll learn about those together. So... Coming around here to the fire. Oh, looky here. I don't know if I can show you this female cardinal. Right up there in the tree. Let's see if I can get her. Oh, she's flying away from me. Okay, maybe not. A little shy. We have a pair of cardinals here. So the tiered beds, five tiered beds. Looky here, we have bricks now. We didn't have those bricks. Last time I, in fact, I think last time I did this tour, I knew I was picking them up the next day or something like that. Maybe even that day that I recorded, I don't remember. But we got about two to three pallets of brick. So not only do we have enough for all the beds, and where you see them, that's actually the paths between the tiered beds. But there's even more all along over there. So we have a lot of brick and of course the other pile that's been there for a long time but i'm ready to make these five tiered beds i just have to find the time isn't that the story of life so the big sycamore tree is looking very healthy very happy about that but there are no leaves on it yet the crepe myrtles, I have seen leaves on another crepe myrtle, but I don't think I've seen any on these. In fact, it was just today I was looking at one that had tiny, tiny leaves, but it, I think it got really, really good sun. So it does need a little bit of trimming up in here. I'd like to clear out a little bit more this year. But all that, now you notice they have persistent berries on them, which is good for the birds. Birds are always in here eating these berries. This decorative pear that is doomed is getting ready to start leafing out the, the cedar over there. Here's a, another look at these bricks. It's going to be about a two foot wide bed and then a two foot, eye, two foot wide walking path in between there. Good morning or afternoon so this is the other angel trumpet and it's actually going to finally rest up two beds up where that garlic bag is but if it survives i think it is i've noticed now there's nothing yet so it's still cold another jalapeno plant ready for harvesting Oh, a bunch of jalapenos in here. Mrs. Bowtie is going to love those. Look, oh, there's even a red one under there. Wow, that's going to be nice and hot. There's a bunch of, oh my goodness, look at this. They're all up in here. You see those? They're big ones. Holy cow. So down from that jalapeno, I say down because we have a slight hill on our front yard. I know there's nasturtium in here, so we'll have to see what grows probably right about here. But look at this asparagus. This little guy is just taking off. It looks beautiful. I need to come in here and cut back some of that brown stuff. But there's another small one right back there. And there's actually on the other side of the holy basil here, there is another one back here this one's not looking as good i need to start getting more serious about feeding these 
but we end up with three asparagus and I need to come in and do some more planting, obviously. The holy basil, there's holy basil seed all over here. So this thing is just here because it's dropping seed. Well, it's not dropping seed anymore, I don't think, but uh, it could be cut out. I'm just cutting it at the base and stick it in the in somewhere to be recycled. Another amaryllis back there, just right in there. This is another one. In fact, I'm gonna walk around here. This is another one that was a single bulb. And this one is actually, oh, this is the one I thought was up in the last place. Uh, one of these was, okay, there's the original right there. In fact, that is the bulb right there. It needs to be replanted. But look, there's one here. There's another one. In fact, you can see the bulb right there. It's a little green thing. There's another one right here wedged in between that one and the, and the old one, the original. So this one might do good to be broken apart. And there's another one. I think there's another one down here. I, I can't tell if, if these leaves are actually growing out of this one here. But the compost has receded around it a bit, receded from it a little bit. So I might need to tend to this one just a little bit. This was Serrano, another grow bag that's going to have to be tended because the winter got to it. So our date palm. Ferns have all died back. I need to pull all these out. Uh, but look, there's already new ferns coming. And the ferns are not parasitic. They are code they are uh, they live together happily cohabitating. Uh, we have some old this is the date palm. This is where the dates grew. And I'm gonna have to climb up there and do some cleanup and get a few dead branches out. Um, get some husks out. There's just a few things that need to be cleaned up before this next year. I want to do a much uh, more robust job of uh, harvesting these. Now that I know what to do with them, I'm making the pindo date jelly. More garlic, of course. And here we have a chocolate mint. And I mean, look at this thing go. Look at this thing. It is thick in here. It is growing. This started as, I think this one was two little tufts of growth and actually should be tended to a little bit and get some of this dead stuff off. But I mean, just look at this thing going. It is just, oh, I can smell it just doing that at arm's length. That is amazing. So back behind the Pindo date, of course, is the grapefruit tree. And the grapefruit tree, of course, succumbed, succumbed, succumbified, I don't know what it is. It fell to this freeze that we had and we lost all the fruit and these fruit are nasty. They are really, they're soft, they're drying out. Um, there's still a bunch left on the ground over here. I've picked a bunch up and uh, have to pick up more, but this is the exciting part here, look new growth. Can you see all the new little leaves coming out? And if you see me checking this out here and there, I would scratch the bark and it would be green underneath there. Well, that's telling me that it's alive. And see, here's some more growth. Look way up around over here. There's new growth. So this thing is going to come back. We may end up having to trim some of the branches. It might end up being a little bit smaller. I don't know, but I'm going to give it every single chance to grow like now out here. If I scratch this, okay, now that is dead. See, there's no green coming up in there at all. So that right there is dead. No, I didn't scratch it very hard though. Let me, yeah, see, there is no green in there. That thing is this. So that branch will end up getting cut off somewhere. I'm going to have to go through this thing with a fine tooth comb after it all leafs out here in a month or two and pick out a lot of stuff that's not coming back. But that's our grapefruit tree that produced hundreds of pounds of grapefruits last year. Satsuma orange trees. This is the one that doesn't do well. 
This is the one back here that does do well. And it actually did pretty good had it not been for the freeze. It would have done a lot better. But there's going to be a lot of new growth on both of these trees. A little bit slower coming back. I do see some uh, growth on, some new growth on this branch over here, which is very exciting. You see that? All kinds of new growth coming out. So we'll have to see what remains after these are, you know, recovered. I do have a bag of feed that I need to feed them. So this, of course, but the side yard, we have the grape arbor. And the grapevines are all without leaves, of course. But they are just in dormancy right now. And they will start growing next year. I have been told it could be two to four years, depending on who I talk to, um, before this actually starts producing grapes. But we got a lot of them along here. Then we got our pomegranate seedlings. This little tray, that's full of pomegranate trees, and so is that right there. It's all pomegranate trees. And these, all these solo cups are pomegranate trees. We did bring these in for the cold, so they uh, they didn't weren't exposed to the elements. Rosemary plants. Some of these rosemary plants did not make it, I don't think. So we're going to probably only have a few extra rosemary plants this year. Solo cups, I need to get those planted up. Those are rosemary also. And then all the peppers. Now these, uh, everything here was actually brought in. This was cleared completely for the cold of, over Christmas. But uh, like you can see, look at all the new growth. It is just, these things are getting ready to explode. This thing here, what is this? This is... Chinese giant bell. So it's actually producing some little peppers. I'm going to have to stake that up because those are going to get heavy. This one here, what is this one? This is uh, not looking great on the outside because look at these leaves. They're all tore up. This is a fatale, but look at all the new growth in here. This thing is just aching to bush out as is this peri-peri. Oh, we actually have a peri-peri pepper. Looky there. There's a peri-peri pepper. I'm gonna let that sit out and season. Oh, but we have new buds on this peri-peri. That's beautiful. Tons of new buds back here. What is this? This is uh, almost not readable. I'm gonna have to rewrite some of these tags. Another peri-peri. This thing is just really wanting to pop out. In fact, I'm gonna turn this one around so it's not in the bell pepper so much. In there, get it standing on its own a little better. It'll do better there. But yeah, all these peppers that we did bring in, pepper plants, chilies and peppers, uh, all of these, that's an orange bell right there, and um, it looks like the cold, the last cold probably got to this. These are all shrivelly. Uh, that one, we might lose that one. That's an orange bell. Another jalapeno. Oh, look at this thing, though. Look at that bell pepper. Is this a Chinese giant? Nope, that's an orange bell. This is an orange bell pepper. Something else. Did I see another one under here? No. That is an orange bell. The pineapple is still sitting there. The uh, um, sugar cane are just sitting waiting for the season. Uh, mosquito plant. Citronella there, and there's another one in the orange pot out yonder there. They seem to be doing okay. Seem to be bushing out. Here's another citronella. This over here is the potatoes that we just planted out not long ago. And I'm kind of curious to see if anything will grow here. No, nothing yet. We grew these on the 13th. This is the 25th, so it's been uh, 12 days. So nothing yet. I'm hoping that frog strangler we had didn't, didn't uh, kill them. So as promised, I'm going to end up over here. Well, not end up, but... This right here was a single 
rain lily. This is those little pink delicate flowers that grow. This was a single rain lily somewhere down in here. In fact, there it is right there. Uh, I can feel the top of it. That's the original right there. But it's got a, over a dozen of them uh, bulbs now. And this thing I am going to be breaking up. I'm going to try to do that on video. And we're going to be planting out these rain lilies. I want to put some back, one or two back in this bag now that I know how much they grow. And I kind of planted them late. So uh, they, may, they may grow more if they have a full year to sit in there. But uh, I'm going to put one or two back in here. And then the rest I'm going to put out in the pollinator garden out front kind of around the perimeter. Now we're going to be using these bricks as perimeters for all the beds um, that we have. And so we're going to be setting them in rows or at an angle. We're going to, I have several different ideas in mind. All the paths like through here through the arbor, it's going to be redone, scrape up all the compost that's in there. And I would be putting down landscape fabric just for the path and then I'll be putting wood chips down in that area and the grape arbor will be doubling in length so it's got two cattle panels on it right now we're gonna I'd like to add two more cattle panels out here and then last but not least of course is the blueberries and the blueberries um, well they need a little tending too but I'm just kind of leaving them be it looks like we have some pepper tree plants growing in the middle in here that might need to be tended out. I say they're pet. I, I don't know what they are. I need to look at those leaves to make sure. But it's dormant. The blueberries are completely dormant. Nothing yet. Uh, it looks like in some places it could be just ready to start growing. This is a live branch in dormancy it looks like it could be getting ready to explode into life but not quite yet we've got this next coal now look at here see this is why i think it might be ready to start exploding because this one's a little bigger and a little more supple these little things at the end and i don't know i don't remember how they grew last year we'll be learning again so here's an actual blueberry leaf you see how it's smooth on the outside? These things over here, that, like I see a holly back in there. This thing here is not smooth on the outside. Yeah, get the camera through the... See, it's got a serrated edge. That tells me that this is probably not blueberry. I'm not feeling confident about pulling it out though. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's taking advantage, and I'll follow the stem down and try to figure it out. It's taking advantage, but once those blueberries come out, all the things that are not blueberries are getting cut out. I do need to stick some more compost up in here. But I'm very excited about the blueberries this year. I'm gonna try some new things. I see a palm tree trying to grow out right here. You see that? That's a palm tree. I'll cut that out at the base. So there we go. That is the January tour of the front and side garden. And it's very cool seeing how things are growing. Of course, we are in the panhandle of Florida. We, we don't see cold here. It's probably not going to snow. Uh, in fact, I, I don't know how often it snows, but it's not very often at all. So things are starting to come back, though. And we're having a little bit of cold coming up in the next few nights. But I have a feeling it's not going to be that cold. I, I, it's going to get below 40, not below freezing. And so we do occasionally get uh, cold in February. Our average last frost date is supposed to be March, middle of March sometime. And that's if we're lucky, I guess. I don't know. But we are getting down to the uh point where we're growing seeds and you know, open to get things growing going again for the new season we got a lot of work to do 
and they got beds to build and I'm gonna hope be putting that on a video and uh, about to be getting a lot of uh, cattle panels for more uh, trellises and archways and so forth arbor and all that so stay tuned if you if you're just uh, coming along here and discovering our channel we do this every month and uh, please subscribe so you don't miss out on the next two parts of this month's garden tour the uh, These videos are my own personal journal, and I'm a little bit ADD, and I'm a little tired at the end of a long day, so my brain is not functioning completely uh, efficiently right now. But these are my own personal journals. There's directories in the uh, description that creates the chapters in the video, and I use these myself. I go back and refer to these when I'm doing things and doing research and trying to figure out things. Eventually, when we get to over a year of doing these, we're just barely under a year, we will be able to go back and say, okay, where was this last year at this time? What did I do? What would I do different? And hopefully this video will help me remember what it was. Uh, in fact, you can see, can you see that blue light right down here? Uh, this is one of the blue lights that shines on the house. There's seven lights, four shines on the house. These two shine on the sycamore tree and then there's another one that shines up in the grape arbor which is not very impressive with no leaves on the grapes <laughs> anyway so this is yeah my personal um journal as far as what's been going on and uh, you're invited to follow along if you want to uh please subscribe if you've already subscribed and you're coming back for another visit then thank you for subscribing and i appreciate you watching i uh, I enjoy making these videos. It's the really the best way I find that I can journal and I get pretty good journaling out of it. And uh, so we'll have to just kind of see where we can get, get with, uh, with the year and, and the growing, the next growing season and the development of everything and, and all that. So um, please hit the thumbs up and uh, the like, on this video if you found it entertaining educational or informational of any level uh, share with your friends on social media and uh, if, if you have anybody that might be interested to see what we're doing on a little plot here a quarter acre in the middle of the old Destin Florida and uh, trying to make the most of it where we've got five more beds to put in that'll bring us to a total of 24 beds on our property. Of course, you saw there's very little grass. Uh, I have a thing against grass and I'm trying to rehabilitate the property a little bit with better, more useful things that we can eat and uh, meet the food prices in the store by doing it ourselves. And we do, we, we uh, if you saw last year's cucumber harvests, my goodness, we made a lot of food in our cucumbers last year uh, last year we did not have we weren't doing this when we did the uh, grapefruit harvest which is right behind you right now um, I think it was 240 pounds I estimated of grapefruits that we got off that tree and unfortunately the freeze really hurt this year but um, just you know that's a lot of food and uh, even the pindo date up here i'm learning how to do deal with that so a lot a lot to learn and a lot that i'm still learning and i'm figuring things out and basically just inviting you to come along and learn with me so all that being said i hope you're having a wonderful new year uh it's been a good year for us we've got a lot of seedlings planted out be sure to watch our other videos we got a lot of updates coming up here we got a full pepper update that i'm going to be doing uh, we have the seedling update because we got seedlings that are about to pop out we have seedlings over here that are days away if you saw me plant the what was i planting basil i think the basil is going to come up really soon uh, more onions oh wait till you see what onions are now coming up that's a surprise to me very big surprise uh, i'm I'm ecstatic about that surprise. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, next part will be the outer beds. There, there's the huge change that's happened in the outer bed and uh, very excited about that. In fact, if I turn the camera here, uh, can you see 
Any difference in our house? <laughs> You'll have to tune in tomorrow if you don't know what I'm talking about. So um, yeah, huge, huge, gigantic difference. And I'm very excited about it. We're all very excited about that. So again, thank you for joining along and, and following uh, our channel and just learning stuff together. So all that being said, comes down to the end and here we go. Have a blessed day. Thank you.